In an attempt to stump the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, many of the idolaters of Mecca stood in front of him from that tribe of Quraysh and demanded from him a sign that no one could deny. One of the signs of the hour that took place at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Chapter 54, verse number 1. Allah Azza wa Jal. This chapter is or surah is called the surah of the moon, Al Qamar. Allah says in the Quran, Allah says, the hour has drawn nearer and the moon has been cleft asunder. The moon has been cleft asunder. It has been split into two parts. And the Prophet was talking to the pagans and to the Muslims as well. Testify, look and testify, bear witness on what is happening. In some narrations, the Kuffar, they were the pagans, they were the one who demanded that the Prophet would split the moon and it was full moon at that night. And when Allah gave that miracle, the idol worshippers, the pagans said that, well, this is sorcery, this is magic. He uh, uh, did something to make us think that we're seeing the moon to be split and he's a sorcerer. So this is not new for him. And we as Muslims believe that this had taken place at the time of the Prophet However, there was a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that was that he pointed towards the moon and the moon split into two and later on came together. It is reported that to this day, science has discovered a crack in the moon. Allah knows best, but it is there. Still, those who have got to the moon, if they have got to the moon, subhanAllah, they would be able to bring back for us this information. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the Iman and the conviction for indeed Allah says in the opening verses of the surah named after the moon, Indeed, the hour has come near and the moon has been split. The moon has been split. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whenever a sign comes to them, they then say, this is magic. So they are the ones who ask for the sign. And when it comes, they say, no, that's magic. So what do you want? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Whenever we see the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our own lives, let us turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A newly published study using images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter revealed tantalizing hints that the moon has slightly shrunk in the recent geologic past and in fact may still be actively shrinking today. The research, led by Dr. Tom Waters from the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, involved searching thousands of lunar images for specific fault structures called lobate scarps. We know the moon is shrinking by looking at the lobate scarps in detail. They actually reflect the crustal materials of the moon being pushed together, breaking, and being thrust over one another. So that indicates that something has been causing the moon to actually contract or shrink. Do you think it would be difficult for Allah to split the moon into two halves as a miracle? Now, one would argue and say, yes, but this is not scientific. This is so and this is so. Dr. Zaghloul Najjar on his website, and I asked him once this personally, and I told him, is there any scientific evidence to prove this? He told me that he, and it's on his website, that while he was giving a lecture in Cardiff in the UK, and a person asked him about the splitting of the moon. And he said, is this scientific? And the doctor said, Dr. Zaghloul said, no, this is not scientific because science cannot prove it. This is a miracle. Had it not been for the Quran and for the authentic Sunnah, so I'm a Muslim, no one can doubt this. We would not have believed it, but because the Quran and the authentic Sunnah proves it, prove it, we believe it and embrace it as Muslims. And we don't need any science to prove that for us. He told in his website that 
a man stood by the name of, if I recall correctly, David Moses uh, uh, Pitcock Dawood. He's a, a Muslim, a revered Muslim. And at the time, I think he was the head of the Islamic party in the parliament or somewhere, I don't know. And he wanted to comment and he said that years ago when he was a Christian, a student gave him a copy of the Holy Quran and the first page he opened was chapter 54 that spoke about the, the moon being uh, uh, cliffed asunder. And he immediately closed the book and said that this is not logical, I'm not gonna continue to read this. Until years later, he saw an interview on the BBC or some other channel in the UK and he saw the interviewer speaking with three scientists from NASA and he was bombarding them with criticism how do you dare spare, uh, spend so much money with all this poverty hunger famine all over the world spend so much money on exploring things that have no value to you and they were talking to him and they said that we've spent a hundred billion dollars just to set a man to uh, a foot set a, a man's foot on the moon and the interview was outraged and then they told him about the things that they've discovered that no way they would have believed that and what they had discovered was that after studying the geology of the moon they've discovered that it was actually there was a crack from top to bottom going right through the center of the moon which meant that it was split and they could tell by uh, 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 the surface of that crack that went through the core and that was from all over from the top to the bottom of the moon and when they studied the only justification scientific justification was that it was split into two parts and then it was sealed back again so David Pitcock, when he heard this, he went back to the Quran, he studied it, and he embraced Islam. Because he said that 14 centuries ago, no way the Prophet ﷺ would have known something like that to be the first ayah in, in, a, in a chapter of the Quran that the moon was split, that the moon was cleft asunder. So this is something from the contemporary you can refer to Dr. Zaghloul Najjar. A person may ask why didn't anyone else see it on that night? As scholars like Zajaj mention, first of all human beings report incidents in context. Someone could have seen it in a different part of the world and doubted their own eyes, am I hallucinating? Or was too doubtful of what he saw to relay it to others or others were too doubtful of this possibility and so they just dismissed it. A second possibility is a time zone differential. Other people simply could have been experiencing daytime or were deeper into the night and they were asleep. A third very reasonable possibility also is that they were simply not the intended audience. It is not difficult for God to show some people a sign and not allow others to notice it. But ultimately, a fourth explanation is this is an incorrect premise and assumption this great sign was seen by others. You see, the baffled crowd in Mecca said, Muhammad must have cast a spell on our eyes, some sort of witchcraft or black magic, but he would not be able to do this to people that were not present. So they decided to ask travelers from outside of Mecca, people in the same region beyond the city, if they too saw what these people did. So they sent riders out of the city, racing to meet those days and nights away from where Quraysh took its dwellings. And they too confirmed that they in fact saw the phenomenon of the moon splitting. Ultimately, the idolaters of Quraysh were cornered and decided to deny their own eyes. No, we didn't see that. Someone else from our times perhaps may ask, why wasn't there a gravitational disturbance? This degree of skepticism is a bit odd because this was a supernatural phenomenon, something that transcended the natural order. So why should we expect a supernatural event to have natural effects? Can't an omnipotent God cleave an astronomical object in a miraculous way and at the same time miraculously suspend any of the expected impact?
القاسم الطبراني uh, the famous scholar of, of history uh, and others uh, القاضي عياد and others have mentioned uh, this narration now قاضي عياد one of the great scholars historians in his book al shifa sayyid nas uh, another great uh, scholar in his ayun al athar um, uh, and, and i put the pictures on the on the screen for you to know about these books they mention a very important narration and ibn kathir has this in bidaya wa nihaya that not only did these enemies of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him witness this but they said that if this man muhammad peace be upon him has done some kind of magic this is a trick then he may have fooled us but he will not have fooled the whole world this is a skeptical question and, and this is good so they said we will ask those caravans that were out to yemen or to syria that were out that were not in mecca whether they saw this event or not and this is a question that somebody may have if this event happened why did people outside of mecca not see it well they did in this narration they asked the caravans that returned to mecca and every single one of them confirmed that they also saw the moon split so now this is very important because not only did the people of mecca and a report out of medina and the, and proponents and opponents all see this as eyewitness accounts but people that were outside in caravans in arabia also saw the same event and this is something that was mentioned in the quran if any of the polytheists the, the mushrikeen uh, the idol worshippers saw this in the quran and had not witnessed it they would have objected to this in the later time this happened in mecca after the migration of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him to medina and then coming back at fat of mecca the victory of mecca they would have said hey in your quran it says the moon split but we didn't see it but they didn't because those mushrikeen those polytheists they themselves saw the event as well but where is it likely that somebody could have seen it other than arabia well there could have been reports no doubt out of places like india because al hind which would be east of arabia it would still be you know the earlier part of the night okay so why don't we have any reports from there well we do in the book called Qissatul Shakruti Farmat um, which is a, in a manuscript format the actual handwritten manuscript a, in the British Library um, there is evidence that has been uh, produced uh, that there was an account in India regarding this by a king of Kerala of southern india that saw this and later when he met muslims he became a muslim now there is an account of an indian king having witnessed the splitting of the moon and converting to islam uh, the manuscript is entitled qissatul shakruti firmad and is listed in our published catalogs with the following a fabulous account of the first settlement of muhammadans in malabar uh, under King Sakruti, uh, Krenagro, uh, a contemporary of Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, who was converted to Islam by the miracle of the division of the moon. As I reached out to the National Digital Library of India, uh, I emailed them about this manuscript and if there were any other historic documentation that they had. As for the record of a king named Shakarwati Farmas, also pr uh, pronounced Farmad, uh, and his observation of the splitting of the moon and later embracing Islam, then this is well documented in many manuscripts that are housed in the National Digital Library of India. The name Shiraman uh, Purumal, uh, and I may be mispronouncing this, is a title that is often ascribed to kings who ruled Kerala from the Chera dynasty before 1000 AD. Warman and Shakramati with the title of Chiringal Purumal who ruled from 621 to 640 and again that would put him exactly at the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him's uh, early time yani, because the Hijrah was around 622 so that would mean that his rule would be right before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him uh, according to these reports, and, and they will mention books here, in 627. Um, this is recorded in Tariq Zuhur al-Islam fil Malibar, 
uh, an early manuscript on the genesis of Islam in Kerala, housed in the digital uh, library, and they give the manuscript number here. Um, this account is also, in fact, uh, recorded uh, by the Portuguese writer Dorte Barbosa. And we have a manuscript here in the digital library for that as well. He writes about a mighty king named Cherman Pramal who ruled Kerala, converting to Islam and ordered the Cherman Mosque, which is still standing in India. This was built in 629 AD after the death of Cherman Pramal, who died in the Arabian Peninsula, according to these reports. This is also confirmed by another Portuguese writer named Johas de Barros and Diogo Alcortos, 